Welcome to Holy Cross Lutheran Church. A special welcome to everyone who's joining us online this morning. It is wonderful to have all of you with us. Uh, just a few short announcements before we begin our service. First of all, this morning at 9.30 Pacific Time, we will be having our Bible class. We're continuing our study of the book of Jonah, and that is on Zoom. You may find that on our church's website. And by the way, you can also find a copy of the bulletin on our website if you would like to follow along. Then on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., we have an Advent meditation that we are doing together on Zoom at 7 p.m. And again, you can find all that information on our church's website. Finally, one, one other announcement, and that is last week we, um, we had a special voters meeting to make an offer on an organ that we are hoping to uh, get from Seattle, Washington. And I'm happy to say that the offer we made was accepted. And so now we are in the process of figuring out how to get it here and raising the rest of whatever monies are needed in order to transport it and store it and such. So you will hear more about that in the coming weeks. And with that bit of good news, we begin with the first hymn, number 515. <laughs> Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, 
confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Their descendants in the midst of the peoples. 
All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring of the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with gar the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel just read, taken from St. John chapter 1. Who is this guy? You can kind of get that sense to the question that the Jews asked of Jesus, the rulers, the Levites, and such. Or rather, to John. Who is he? Eating locusts and wild honey, wearing camel's hair out in the wilderness. Who are you? They ask him. We, of course, can ask the same question of ourselves. This is kind of the age of identity. Who are you sitting at home? Who are you trying to do what is right? Who are you when it seems as though what is right is not nearly as clear as it ought to be? And even when we know what is right and wrong, we just simply don't want to do it. John has some lessons for us. In order to answer that question, both for himself and for us, we have to first of all know who we are not. Who are you? They ask John. And the answer is, first of all, I am not the Christ. I am not the prophet. I am not Elijah come back from the dead. All of these people were figures in Jewish history. They were people that they either expected or knew or remembered or thought that they knew. And if they could kind of pinhole John on who he is, then they could sort of put him into the right box, keep him on the shelf, or he's going to do any damage to anybody else. John, however, will not be deterred. He knows who he is not. And perhaps you do as well. You are not God. You are not in control of your life. You're not in control of other people. You're not even in control of yourself. As much as it is easy and very fashionable to kind of second guess People and think, well, if I were in charge, I would do things this way, and then everything would be perfect. Everything would be right. It is not so. And the first thing we have to know as human beings is where we fit. And that means who we are not. We are not So who is John? You can almost sense their frustration kind of coming out. What do you have to say for yourself? They ask him. And the answer is he is a prophet. He is one who speaks God's word. He is a voice crying in the wilderness, speaking what God has given him to speak. And as our gospel says at the beginning, he is a witness. He points to what he sees and knows more than anything else. What, is, what matters is not John. What matters is what is John pointing to? And the next verse in our text, or right after our text rather, is... John saying, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John knows who he is. He knows who he is not. And so he points them to Jesus. Do you know who you are? Do you know that you are a sinner? Do you know that God loves you? That God pursues you? That God has washed you 
baptized you, made you his own child, brought you into his family, carried you into the community of faith? Do you know who you are? Do you know that you too are a witness? Now that doesn't mean you have to wear a camel's hair. I'm kind of glad for that, honestly. It doesn't sound very comfortable. But every time we point to the scriptures and say, that's what matters, every time we gather, even in this strange, dispersed way, we say, this is who I am. And, of course, every time we gather at this altar and say, this is what I receive, we are making a witness, a testimony to all of those around us that this is what makes me who I am. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The water that he washes us with. The word that comes into our ears. All of these things come together to shape you and make you who you are. Now we have to ask an important question here because it seems like it's something John would ask and that is where is Jesus in all of this well Jesus is the coming one he is the one who comes to save you he is the one who is present in the water in the word in the sacrament in this place wherever two or three are gathered in his midst he is not simply and blessed as a baby in a manger. He's not simply a memory, but he is present here and now with you, his people. So what? So what does that change for you and me? Well, knowing what you are not and who you are kind of puts you where you belong. It means that you can know where you're going and who is going to be there with you along the way. Change is how you look at yourself. I am not defined by my sins. My sins don't make me who I am. It is the water. It is the blood. It is my Savior. He is the one who makes me who I am. And what's more, that changes how we look at others. Because they too have been redeemed. Maybe they don't know it. Maybe they do. But either way, by your words and your life, you point them to the Messiah. The coming one who takes away the sin of the world. The ancient name for this Sunday, the third Sunday in Advent, is Rejoicing Sunday. Luther loved this text for Advent because he, he said that it is all about Jesus. And so it is. Rejoice with John and with all the church as we remember who we are not and who we are. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. We rise and sing the offertory.
personally receive the offering, I would invite you to please either mail your offering in, drop it off at church at some point during the week, or to consider signing up to do so electronically. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. <coughs> Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Keep your saints from every folly that would turn them from your words of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You sent John to proclaim the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Richly and daily forgive our sins and the sins of all believers. Bless Matthew, our synod president, Michael, our district president, Dwayne, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in Christ. Gather and preserve your holy Christian church by your voice, and send us faithful preachers who will not deny but confess your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Father, be the source of strength and comfort in every home. Bless the children of our families, that every darkness would be lightened by your Son's gracious visitation. Sanctify them completely, that their whole spirit, soul, and body may be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our give wisdom and success to our nation and its leaders. Behold, in mercy, all who are in authority over us and those newly elected. Preserve our land and its citizens in peace and harmony, and protect all who serve in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our receive our thanks in every circumstance for your kindness in Christ Jesus and the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life with him. We especially pray for Heather, David, Jerome, Miriam, Christian, Tom, Carol, Pammy, Wayne, Pat, Dick, Kathy, Russ, Heather, Tom and Joanne, Tiffany, Renee, Robert, Nate and Lene, Robbie, Warren, Steve, Demetrius, Jordan, Bruce, Rosanna, Lori, Lucy, Lorraine, all of the family of Joyce, all the family from, of Janet, and all the family of Charlene. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Oh,